The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. What time is it? Ladies and gentlemen, the Undisputed Era has arrived. You have the 25 days of Christmas. Impact's going to have the 25 days of releases. I send it you to deletion! Yeah! It's, uh, it's hashtag alpha versus omega. Let's just say hashtag aroused. <laughs> no, you're going to step in that ring, and you're going to be looking at me eye to eye, and you're going to realize you ain't got a chance. Thank God we don't have to talk about it anymore. Because she got that cancer out of there. Sean stole my answer. I'm just glad we don't have to talk about this shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not an insult. That is just a fact of life. Impact management told me it'd be in my best interest to go out of my way to just address what went down last night at Impact on Pop. I hit this man in the face with a baseball bat. People are saying we crossed the line. So from the bottom of my heart, I have to tell each and every single one of you, I'm not sorry for a single thing that happened. Look at me and tell me I am not being serious. I do not feel bad. TMZ is messaging and interviewing Eddie Edwards when they should be interviewing me. The most dangerous man in professional wrestling today. Oh yeah, and Jim Cornette, you can kiss my ass too. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling to the mat. And your host, Gary Vaughn, Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser. Hey, hello and welcome to Wrestling to the Max. Uh, I don't know why I didn't check the episode number before we started. <laughs> episode 289, part two. And, of course, I am not Gary Vaughn, as uh, he is out for a wedding this weekend of a friend of his. So, it's just Paul and I here. Yeah. Of course, uh, and we, you know we're coming to you on a Saturday morning, so we'll even change the day because, you know, Paul and I are working these jobs that make you really, really tired. Thursdays are hard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's my Very excuse. Hard. <laughs> Very hard, and just yeah. I mean, you know, Paul gets home. He's he's tired. You got to watch these shows, and you know sometimes you it's. You're trying to watch Impact and not fall asleep, uh, not not because of Impact itself necessarily, but also because you're so tired. And I'm basically picking up Anaya, doing homework with her, having to put her to bed. So it's it's not very fun. Uh, plus, you know, we had uh, you know the extra with New Japan. Uh, there's also the which I think we both just forgot about until I'm about to mention it right now. The uh, fast lane. Happening this Sunday? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we we will have a roundtable up tomorrow at some point. Or not tomorrow. Uh, later today at some point. Uh, you can read on the website. Um, I love that we can just <laughs> do this on the fly here. I, I was sitting here looking at it and going, oh, yeah, all the matches are done. And then, oops, we don't have it in the dock because we forgot. <laughs> we forgot. Uh, but... Yeah, so we're going to do a New Japan anniversary show. Uh, we won't talk about everything, uh, probably mo- more of the more important matches. And then New Japan Cup started, so we'll talk about the first two matches. And they are literally running shows all the way through till Monday. So lucky for us, the shows end and they take a break until Wednesday for the next time we do a show. So we'll have a lot of matches to talk about on the Monday show. Uh, thankfully for the New Japan Cup, we will only be talking about the matches that are involving the actual New Japan Cup itself. If you want to hear about the undercard, I'm sure there are reviews out there that cover those. So um, you can uh, read them 
where you like. Uh, of course, Formula Mania, one of our partners, Larry Zonka, is the master of reviews. Dude, I don't know what that guy doesn't review at this point. Uh, Lord bless his soul. He he probably watches way too much uh, wrestling. Uh, but, hey, he's uh, he helps out everyone. And mm-hmm. uh, that that is a wonderful thing in of itself. And, of course, if you want to read the roundtable that I mentioned, you can go to WTMNet.com. Uh, where you can uh, get all of our great podcasts. Uh, jo- work has made it uh, a pain in the butt for me this week. Uh, so Saturday will be the day where I catch up all the podcasts, and they will all be up at once uh, on the site. But, uh, you know, that that happens sometimes with this uh, this whole work thing. But uh, as, as Paul is getting the fast lane stuff going, are, are, have you... Have you been able to adjust yet to this whole new thing with you and, and uh, getting up and and all that? Sean, nothing in life has prepared me for consistently waking up at 6 a.m. Monday through Friday. Just, just nothing. School, jobs, n- nothing. This is the hardest thing I've had to do in my life. And I, I'm sure that sounds very terrible if you're somebody who's been pulling a 9 to 5 or an 8 to 4 or whatever you're doing these days. Um, but I'm used to working retail and that usually comes with later hours. <laughs> right. Or, the, or they change the hours for you yeah. every week or, or whatever. I just, yeah. When, when you have that consistent time slot, especially early in the morning, it's kind of like, Oh, I got to get that clock. I don't mm-hmm. know how the overnighters do it. That's gotta be, uh, crazy for them. And I'm sure those people are look, are sitting here going, Oh God. What a yeah, pansy! At this, this guy point. bitching but, at six a.m. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like try to stay all the way up till six a.m. when you've been awake, you know. Uh, but yeah, so I, th- I think you probably by the time we get, we're not going to have music. So no, yeah, uh, because I, uh, we, I completely spaced that this was this weekend, even though I've remembered three times today talking to people about this damn show. When it comes time <laughs> to actually record something, I have forgotten. Oh, that's uh, two pay reviews in a row. Uh, thankfully, WrestleMania is coming. We will not uh, forget about that. But <laughs> don't don't throw a baby out with the water. Don't don't throw it out. <laughs> Just <laughs> I might forget. <laughs> you never know. Uh, it is, it's true. But yeah, so fast lane. Of course, uh, all the titles are on the line. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. have that to look forward to uh, as well. Uh, but we should uh, probably, I guess, start with, might as well start with this women's tag match here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Becky Lynch and Naomi against uh, Natalia and Carmella. I I mean, what what are we doing? What, why is this? I, I uh, okay. Uh, faces to win. I don't really have a great reason as to why, but Becky's been tapping Carmella basically every time they fought since forever. I'm sure that'll happen again. I could see them try to do an okie doke on the pay per view, just to, I guess, find a way to keep this going. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some you know pulling some tights or distraction or something uh, that could happen. You know, Carmella hits somebody with the briefcase. You know, all those things are there for the heels. But I agree with you; they'll probably keep the status quo going and have. Uh, Lynch and Naomi win here. The uh, I think Harry used the glowing fire as the the tag team name. I kind of like that. Uh, so it sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> Boo on you, Harry Broadhurst. <laughs> uh, I could see Becky thinking that that's great though. With oh, Becky loves a good pun. All. God bless her. She loves a good pun. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Shinsuke Nakamura, the Royal Rumble winner, in case you forgot, uh, going against Rusev, and let us not forget it will be Rusev Day like it is every day, and Rusev has an extra motivation because Nakamura ruined the voice of his friend, Aiden English. Do you think that that means anything here for Rusev? Is he just going to get a kick to the face, too? Probably. Uh, I, I tell you what, this, somebody who has forgotten that Shinsuke won the Royal Rumble, the SmackDown booking team, where's this guy been? He's on a milk carton somewhere. He's not on TV. They're looking for him. 
don't understand this. Like, <laughs> are, are we just going to – so are we waiting until after this pay to start having him do stuff? I mean, I I guess if you're going to have him be involved in this thing with Rusev, right, you kind of need him to be on TV. Mm-hmm. But I guess it makes sense that he's not involved in the whole title picture when you've got a smorgasbord of people involved in that right now. Mm-hmm. So – He's kind of just waiting to see who the champion's going to be at the end of that. And we'll, uh, I guess we get to address the big rumor that's going around when we talk about the six pack challenge, which hope to hope the Lord, it does not happen, Mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll see how uh, that goes when we get there. But Shinsuke, this is a warm up match. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is a Shinsuke win against somebody who has a lot of crowd interest right now. And they're banking on that to keep people interested. That's they could have a good match though. Let's hope that you get a good match out of this. You know, a six match card, they better get some time. Uh, and and I, I agree with you. I think they're very capable of doing something great here. It's just, is Shinsuke going to want to, and are they going to get the time to do it? That's uh, two very important things. Uh, (laughs) you'd imagine that they would get the time. Unless they're going to just throw matches on here, and not to mention they still got the hour pre-show, so you got to have some kind of match to to put on that. I don't know how you really can't go that deep with the SmackDown roster, so uh, a, you know I don't know what you smells a Mojo out. Raleigh match. That probably is what's going to happen <laughs> yeah. uh, here for sure. Uh, so SmackDown tag titles, the USA. Look, I'm never going to complain about Usos and New Day because yeah. they have great matches with each other, but we're doing this again. They beat everybody else, Sean. They got to start over. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and it's it's good to keep the New Day around the tag titles. They're still your hottest tag team act up there with the Usos. Keeping them in the picture makes sense. I, I thought the Usos were going to drop it to Benjamin and Gable, though, to keep that sort of story fresh, and they decided to toss it out the window. So um, there's no reason still to take the belts off the Usos, so I'll say they retain. You think the the Usos get put into some kind of multiple tag team match at WrestleMania, or do they try to do Usos and New Day in another stipulation match or something? You know, if you believe the rumors, it's Usos New Day Bludgeon Brothers at WrestleMania. Um and that's that fits the bill for what they like to do with the tag team division of having multi team matches. Uh I I think that's probably more true than not. So I, I I as much as I think the New Day versus just a straight up Bludgeon Brothers are are the Usos in, in another gimmick match would be great. I I, I bank more on the multi person. I would think the Usos going into Mania is kind of fair for them, the way that they've carried the titles the whole year. Uh, they've been a great tag team. They've they've adjusted to this heel uh, persona, gotten the crowd behind them now, which is crazy to think when they first started, you're sitting there going, oh, my God, what are y'all doing? This is so annoying, and, like, y'all were trying too hard, and they made it work. Uh, people are liking the Uso Penitentiary and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, put them in with New Day, who also have their own, you know, the thing with the pancakes and everything else that they they've always had. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, uh, Xavier Woods was uh, doing some. He was on some high profile game podcasts this, uh, the last couple of weeks too. So he keeps uh, raising his profile, uh, talking everywhere. So it's. The, these these dudes know how to keep themselves relevant, and I would think the Usos win. I could even see New Day winning by, but not getting the titles uh, to kind of like add some something in there to keep them in it. Mm-hmm. But I'll, I'll just say Usos win out right here, just to just to keep that going for them. Yeah. I, uh, I, I I see your point. I definitely think that the Usos do roll into Mania with the tag titles. I don't see a reason to switch it here on Fastlane, especially so close to, to Mania when it's it's probably not really going to do anything to engage the audience more. Oh, for sure. I, I don't think that's going to matter too much because we've seen New Day without the titles before, and I, they, they do just fine. 
So, uh, SmackDown Women's title, Charlotte defending against Ruby Riot. Uh, Charlotte's going to win. Uh, yeah, this is basically busy work, which is really unfortunate because the, the whole ball was dropped from for the Riot Squad just basically right out the gate, like so many other things on SmackDown have been recently. So, um, also, if you believe the rumor mill, too, this is where Asuka's going to make the announcement that she wants to face Charlotte at WrestleMania, too, which could make for a nice moment, but uh, this is this is going to be Charlotte Flair getting a win. I hope this is really good, though. If they, if they let Ruby, uh, I think, sort of actually look like she can contend, we're going to be in for a pretty good match. Yeah, I hope so, too. Uh, again, the, with this with this card being uh, so low on matches... Mm-hmm. You got to give all these matches time unless the six pack challenge is going to go like an hour. Yeah. Or 45 minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even with that, though, you still got to have some other matches go long. And oh, God. God forbid the match we're going to talk about next is going to go very <laughs> long considering the two people that are involved in it. But uh, not that I don't like either one of those people. Uh, you know, one of them is glorious, in fact, but just. We know the style that they wrestle. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, talk about not complimentary at all. Uh, but, you know, Char- if they let Ruby go out there, get some time with Charlotte, um, you know, Ruby actually could, uh, could help turn this thing into something you really want to be talking about at the end of the night. And possibly one of the better matches on the show. So, mm-hmm. uh, or we can hope anyway. But Charlotte's winning this. Uh, Absolutely. For sure. U.S. title match, Bobby Roode defending against one Randall Orton. I just mentioned these two love to wrestle with holds and, uh, you know, wasting time with them and slowly and on the ground and methodical. And, you know, you see the slow pace that in which I am talking. This is probably going <laughs> <laughs> this would be a great, uh, you know, ref- match to get you ready for the six pack challenge because, yeah, you can get some rest. You can go to the popcorn stand. You can go to the merch booth. Get you a nice t shirt. Um, you're going to be able to do a lot of things during this because uh, rude. God, bl- I love this guy so much, but he plods like nobody's business, and uh, you know what Randy does when he doesn't care. Or, or even when he does, it's it's plotting. So, boy, uh, I, this is one I hope doesn't get a lot of time because we might be asleep before the next uh, next match comes up. I, I mean, I, I don't you see think a there's any chance that Orton wins? I don't see a reason to move it. I mean, you're using the title of Spotlight Bobby right now, which I think is the right move. Randy doesn't need it. I think he's here to elevate Bobby up the card. I think Bobby wins. I agree with you that on that, you know, uh, Bobby Roode is just, he's, he's the guy doing the, the title challenge. He's the guy that they're, he's had this belt for a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't think he has a reason to lose it for mania. It would kind of seem really weird to do that. Mm-hmm. Just have him win here, whether you involve Randy Orton again, mania wise, turn it into a multiple person match or. Or, or have it be like some kind of open challenge at Mania and have somebody debut there, whatever it is that they uh, decide to do on that front. But Bobby Roode will, will win. Mm-hmm. And, well, you hope that you know the result of the six-pack challenge. <laughs> but uh, the way the WWE goes sometimes, uh, you just never know. Uh, AJ, of course, is been going on with uh, the returning John Cena for a while, along with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler also get thrown in here, and they renew their little rivalry as well. Uh, Corbin and Ziggler uh, are just in here. I, I don't think that they really have a shot here. I think it's between the champ and the other four. Uh, Kevin Owens and Zayn will probably cancel each other out. Uh, I think there's rumors of them facing off at Mania again, right? Uh, uh, it's it's either that or Andre the Giant Battle Royal for those two. Which is sad. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> what they've been doing this whole uh, year. And then there's one Jonathan Cena who, oh my God, I hope the rumors are not true and we're going to somehow turn the hotly anticipated Shinsuke AJ match into a Shinsuke AJ and John Cena match uh, because of the, even though it's been upgraded to a lesser injury, it's still a significant injury. And when it comes down to it, you don't want any, well, what if this happens at WrestleMania? So I can see the feeling of the need of making John Cena be in a big match, but don't ruin it, WWE. Don't ruin it. Just have AJ win outright. No, no John Cena had a chance or whatever. In fact, AJ should pin John Cena just to put it out of the misery, even though it's probably not going <laughs> to. No, he's not pinning Cena. <laughs> <sighs> I, I think to me, the thing that makes the most sense out of this is he's got to get some resolution with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. He's got to pin one of those two. And um, I, I guess depending on what you're going to do with these guys coming out of this, it's it's got to it's got to be one of those two that he pins. I think that's just the way it has to be. Uh, I don't know what you do with Cena at Mania. Uh, if, if you still haven't found a spot for Braun, I think that would be a great match to do there. Um, and, and the story you have with Cena right now is, is interesting to me because he can't keep up with the younger talent. That's been the story on raw. And they kind of threw that out the window when he came to SmackDown. Cause he just comes in straight up beats AJ. So like, your WWE champion can lose to him, but uh, you know Seth Rollins, guys like that, you can't beat him. He, he just can't do it. So I don't know. Um, little inconsistent. Technically, AJ is not young. I guess so. That's, that is true. <laughs> I mean, technically, a lot of the guys he's beating or losing to aren't young, but they are new yeah. to WWE still. So right. You know, I I don't know. Uh, I think AJ wins. I think he pins Kevin. And um, we we can move on from there, but uh, you know this. Is a, I'm I'm looking forward. I think this is the only reason they've really given you to watch the show is the six pack challenge. If you're even interested in what's happening over here on the blue brand, yeah. So th- you don't think there's a chance they try to make this elimination or something no. by the time you get to the pre-show because they've done that before. No, why complicated? Uh, I would agree. Just leave it the way it is. Mm-hmm. I would think that you get. I wouldn't even be surprised if like Baron and Dolph just like take each other to the match pretty mm-hmm. early or something, and like they're in the back, and then it becomes a fatal four way, and uh, which really it should have just been a fatal four way to begin with. But right, right, you know, WWE can't help themselves sometimes, and yeah, as long as AJ wins, keeps the title. And we don't try to convolute this thing anymore leading up to WrestleMania, then mm-hmm. then we're good. You know, in fact we should just have Shinsuke come out at the end, everybody points to the sign, and get everybody hot for that match. Let's let's just do that. Yeah. I mean the only reason I'm okay with you doing Lesnar Reigns again is because we're getting AJ and Shinsuke. Don't ruin that, WWE. Don't take that away from me. Don't yeah, be on. that guy. Especially <laughs> if Brock is leaving and he could do another Shit show. Yeah. yeah, yeah on yeah. Roman. So. So, boy, oh boy. <laughs> what a way to end WrestleMania. <laughs> Are you ready for that? No. no. <laughs> well, that's uh, WWE Fastlane 2018. Uh, let's hope it's one of those. It's the last uh, single branded pay-per-view for the foreseeable future because mm-hmm. they are now back to being co-branded with, along. Well, WrestleMania would have been anyway, but after that as well remember that so uh they are what 13 pay reviews yeah going back to that all four hour shows so all four hour shows well four hours and then i'm sure for the big four it will be five plus uh still so you know well we'll see how that goes oh i mean i'm including pre-show as well but we'll see maybe they'll stick to that and understand that it's not just the Number of shows, it's the number of hours that you're making people sit there and watch uh, yeah. as well. But, uh, you know, 
people uh, do have things that they have to do after these shows are over. Not just us reviewing them, but also people just having lives right. uh, and, and whatnot, too. You already have people watch a lot of your programming during the week. Kind of some slack sometimes. Mm. So I guess uh, this means we move on to the news. Quick hits. Let's do it. It's time for wrestling news. Quick hits. Sean, we're so lost without Gary. I don't know who to throw this to. Am I doing this? Are you doing this? I guess I will take Gary's role (laughs) here for this. So a little bit of news coming out in the last few days has been uh, releases uh, from NXT, uh, Stage Beckett and Abby Lath, of course, the uh, former uh, Kimberly, who already has any bookings in place for her. Uh, you know, she's got a name on the Indies. That's not going to – you figure it wouldn't have taken her too long for that. But some rumors going around as to why she got released, cost-cutting, some other things that aren't so pretty, uh, whatever you believe. She hadn't been on TV in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I th- I think she's only been on the odd episode of NXT since the classic, um, and it's not many. So uh, I assume they were just sort of keeping her in the wings, and it just turns out they 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 just don't need her anymore. I would believe cost cutting. I would also believe that maybe there's some other factors involved here, but um, I mean the Indies just got back a terrific worker. Kimberly is fantastic. She's got plenty of places lo- looking to book her. You know, I mean. Ring of Honor's got a women's division they're trying to get off the ground. She'd be great there. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Impact wants her, they obviously have uh, one half of the Kimber Bombs there and Allie slash Cherry Bomb. If she wants to go there and do that, I think that'd be great too. So lots of places for her to go um, and and continue to make a living. Anything uh, Sage Bucket? You know, I, Sage on Twitter seemed like she might be done with wrestling again. Um so I, I um, you know, I don't know. This is, uh, I enjoyed what I saw from her from the classic too, but it's just somebody else who, uh, you know, when you have Nye and a bunch of others, you don't want to, I think, overuse the uh, the monster role, I guess, is, is something that she would have basically been playing. Yeah, especially with uh, Jazzy would have been uh, a, a big, uh, she would have had a big role had she not got injured. Yep. So... That's another person you would have been behind as well. It's just, there's only so many of the monsters, especially with the women. There's only so many spots anyway. Right. And, and just, you can only have so many of the, unless they decided to ever have a women's tag team division, you're going to have this problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and, you know, according to some people on, on Twitter, including, uh, the man over at Squared Circle Sirens, there's plenty of people that they are still bringing in, whether it's women or men. I don't know why they keep signing people, but yet they have no uh, recourse for some of them as far as TV time and everything else. I get it. You got to have that performance center full and all that. You got to have a reason for that thing to keep running. But, geez, <laughs> you know, how many people can you sign as a company? Uh, are you Are you just signing them so that they're not working somewhere else because – Let's be honest. I mean, even if All In does great, uh, you know, New Japan doesn't have a women's division. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Japan keeps that stuff separate. ROH, you know, even if Women of Honor, like, explodes, I I still don't think it's going to be anything to – it could rival it, but it's not – I don't know that it's going to have people – wanting to leave NXT to go over there just you're you're the from your place right mm-hmm. i don't think that you need to worry about hoarding people like that uh especially the women you know but you know that's I mean, kind of how they've operated for the last while right ring of honor to me it seems comfortable where it is um and and uh, or i should say executives um at Sinclair seem to think it's comfortable where it is so uh, and I don't know if Ring of Honor is ever going to want to compete. It doesn't look like it. I think, you know, I think a lot of people within the company itself too are fine with where they are being what they are. Um, there are, yeah, 
It honest to God would not surprise me if they are hoarding people just to keep people to, like because I I mean we've seen with with how much access you have to a fan base these days in wrestling because of the internet because of streaming services because of um, you know a billion other avenues that you have now with social media like there's ways to get the word out and put on good shows and and maybe they're just worried if somebody starts catching a lot of momentum that you know, it might snowball into something they're going to have to deal with, and that's just not a chance they're willing to take. That's fair. I mean, you do have injuries come up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do have other things that come up where you want to have that people waiting in the wings, especially now it seems like after every big four show, they call up someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- there's always the need uh, to have more spots to fill. And I understand that point. I, and not everybody they bring in is an indie name that are coming off the street. They have people that are former, you know, military people and, and uh, boxers and all this kind of stuff. So, Mm -hmm. you know, so they all come from different walks of life and they're probably going to be in the performance center a lot longer than the indie folk, but still, I mean, they, you know, as uh, Abby Lath showed, you don't want to stick around and not do anything. You want to be working. Right. So, uh, even if that means going for lesser pay or perhaps more, because uh, mm-hmm. now you can command some bigger money now that you've had that WWE name attached to you. Right. That helps her and, and all these things. Exactly. Uh, sp- speaking of NXT, a, a few more things concerning NXT. Bobby Fish uh, will miss six months after surgery on his injured knee. Uh, that happened on Thursday. Man. You have to worry about him just because he is of an older age. Yeah. Anytime you have one of these injuries, that's got to take a toll on you. Mm -hmm. You have to wonder if he can come back the same way. Uh, Is he going to be more limited? Uh, You know, this obviously affects Undisputed Era's, you know, tag team run and everything else. Obviously, Kyle Riley's plenty done singles work. So that's, it's not really going to hurt him too much. But. It still sucks to buy your fish, you know, that he has waited so long to have this opportunity and it life takes it away. Right. Um, yeah, the person that so hurts most is Bobby fish. Usually in these tag team situations recently, it's, it's affected both guys, but as you said, I mean, we know Kyle O'Reilly can handle himself singles wise. Excuse me. Uh, of course, Adam Cole at uh, the other part of undisputed era is going to be fine as well. Um, and it's really just, you know, Bobby's now missing out time. They're, they're losing that tag team title spotlight. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, you really hope this guy gets well quickly and, uh, you know, can, can come back as, as, as great as he always has been. Do you think that they would bring all three of them up together as the undisputed era? Or would they siphon them off or if they were healthy? Yes. If uh, now I, I would doubt it. I would say Cole might get the nod before anybody just cause Kyle is not, I still don't think O'Reilly is strong on the microphone. And uh, that's right. something he's going to have to work on for a while down there in NXT. And he could be one of those longer term projects that ends up getting a, a run at the NXT title or, or, or something else down the road, you know, but uh, uh, I worry it, about him being the next uh, two Oh five guy. Yeah, he could be another two hundred five guy too, which at this point doesn't seem like that bad a thing because you 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 do get a spotlight to really go out there and perform now. So, except the crowds don't care, which I'm sure that affects them after a while. Uh, no you matter how much on, praise you get on, I just you think I think you keep putting on great matches, people are going to care eventually. <laughs> I do too. I, I agree with you on the you know. The, great matches and everything I'd love to know if since they've changed over what the viewership numbers are for the show now mm-hmm. if it's better or about the same or yeah has too much know. damage been done yeah that's a good question hopefully they can reveal that at the next uh, whatever financial things if if the whole change of, I'm sure that they would love to talk about it if it if it has made an effect so yeah I'm sure we will hear about it in some form. And the biggest thing to come out of NXT, now this is sort of a spoiler, but honestly it's just about a championship. It's not revealing who's going to be in the championship at all. It's that at NXT TakeOver New Orleans, of course the pre-WrestleMania show, 
There is going to be a new championship up for grabs, the NXT North American Championship that is rumored to take the place of the UK Championship, or perhaps they're being merged, or maybe it's just a separate title completely, because there has been talk for a long time about a having a secondary singles title. Interesting that they're calling it the North American Championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like that should be in like WCW or something. Uh, but six man ladder match. That uh, sounds awesome. Yeah. The, the participants in there are kind of spoilery, which is why I left them off. So um, I didn't want to dive too far into that direction, but yeah, this is, this is very interesting. Uh, as Sean just said, that this has been sort of bandied about, I think for a while, not only amongst uh, fans, but you have to think there had to be some conversation in NXT, especially with how crowded I think the top of the card has become. And that's sort of what I think they're going for is that they, they took a look over there at what New Japan is doing with the IWGP heavyweight and the IWGP Intercontinental title as sort of the 1-1-A situation. And I think that's what they're trying to craft here is sort of that same thing. So if you have a longer-term program you're trying to accomplish with the NXT title, uh, you can sort of let that maybe hang back or not be on the card and you can let the North American title main event in a takeover or something like that. Let's see. I just worry about you only have one hour TV and now you're adding a title. You know, how much is this going to affect who gets on TV and how much we see of certain people and all that, you know? I mean, it could be a nudge that maybe two hours is in our future. I wouldn't have a problem with that. I'd be fine with it. I think for the amount of people that they keep signing, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. That's, because that's, you're going to get more of them on TV. I also hope this means you actually develop more storylines. On This also affects the writing staff, right? Because you're going to have to now develop storylines. You can't just have squash matches for the whole two hours. Right, okay. right. I mean, you still could do squash matches. You just can't have a whole show and then the one good match in the main event, right? You have to sort of change up your, your philosophy. But I absolutely see your point. Yeah, I mean, we could, I think, if that ever gets announced, that could be a whole, you know, NXT uh, review show by in itself of what they could do to make sure that that two hours flows just as well as the one hour, which is always hard. That's mm-hmm. it's not a easy thing. Once you add more programming that you have to plug for, especially for NXT that does not have the same sort of commercial time slots that, say, a Raw or SmackDown does. That also factors in, so going to be interesting if that ever actually happens mm-hmm. uh, or not. Uh, sadly, we have to talk about the after effects of Rich Swan uh, again here. Uh, sort of the similar situation with the Michael Elgin, uh, whereas you know Michael Elgin has been able to, and we're going to talk about it because he made some uh, major waves. In uh, New Japan, uh, over the over, with this uh, show that just happened yesterday, Rich Swan is is getting a lot of backlash for all of the t- stuff with uh, domestic violence and all that, and it's sort of making him just finishing up bookings that he has and not taking any more and just retiring. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it you know if you if you read some of his tweets too he seems sort of um, I don't want to I mean he seems very depressed um, mm-hmm. you know he has a couple on there about how he lost the dream job and that's just you know what's the point now because he I mean I assume with all the the backlash like you just mentioned that he's getting for this uh, news bit that he made with with his wife and then the 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 assault and everything like that it's just it it's it's got to be like not worth it to him anymore so just you know retire and and focus on trying to be, I guess, a better husband and and, and finding a life outside of wrestling. Now, which really, this guy is super talented. So um, I I bet you he could have found some feet here if he wanted to, but it just doesn't seem like it's the way he wants to go anymore. Yeah, certainly. I mean, also just getting some time off. I mean, you never really retire in wrestling, right? So he could take a year off or so Mm -hmm. or and come back refreshed and – and say, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to, you know, Navy uh, Lucha Underground Season 5 is going up. 
you can get in there and it's a different environment than say if you went to an impact or even a ring of honor which yeah, i think he would do great there too i mean hell new japan could get him for the junior division mm-hmm. uh, just you know he he just might need a refresh and and get wrestling out of the mind for a while and then get to go back in and feel better and look uh, you know WWE if if that thing dies off and and people stop talking about it perhaps maybe he can be uh let back in at some other time frame right or whatnot but you got to let that uh simmer down for a while and i mean maybe twitter will never forgive you because people seem to hold grudges on wrestling Twitter for some reason. Uh, I get this is a terrible thing that happened and all that. Um, very much like the Elgin thing. You don't, you don't want to let them forget it. Uh, but these people do need to go on living. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got to... There's, there, there's a certain time where it's just... I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say... I don't want to say something bad here, but it's just like there comes a limit to this stuff, right? It's, I mean, it's really – because it's a trial of public opinion, right? It's nothing in the mm-hmm. courtrooms. It's nothing – anything like – well, at least for Elgin yet. I don't know if that's still being pursued or not, but um, I mean, Jesus, I, the stuff with which Swan has been dropped and, you know, it's, just, it's the time frame we live in right now. It's not going to go away and – as you said, wrestling Twitter just does not forget anything. Uh, they they are a savage bunch on there, and um, you know it's uh, it's rough. Some people, yeah, I mean Elgin obviously had a, a way to get out, and he can just keep going to Japan, and he's got fresh life over there essentially, as far as that goes. But I don't know. Uh, for Rich Swan, it's a bit of a different story, even though I would say that while his you know crime was still pretty bad, it's. Certainly nowhere near as uh, line breaking, I think, as what happened with Elgin. So, <laughs> yeah, and it, it's sort of like the uh, Ray Rice thing too, because his wife is still with him. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Uh, you know, he he never got to be back in the NFL. Uh, wrestling is a different beast, though, because you don't just have one league to answer to. You can go do different things, mm-hmm. and you know, again, th- there's avenues as Elgin has shown where you can go and. People might complain about it online, but he could get work. So it's yeah. just up to him what he wants to do. Uh, Rey Mysterio, as I mentioned, his his injury has been upgraded to only a partial tear. Uh, so WWE still talking to him. Obviously, look, he's going to be a draw for WrestleMania if he shows up. And, you know, you can use him for access and all the other stuff. As well, even if he doesn't wrestle. So, you know, I think uh, to that end, uh, it would be smart to continue to talk to WWE. Plus, you're getting big payday. It's WrestleMania. Everybody's, you're, you're getting like, you know, more money than you would for doing backlash or something. And uh, the good thing, too, is that the Liger match is still being advertised for Strong Style Evolve. So, uh, glad that that match has not been taken off the table. Yeah, I mean, we Tanahashi, if we're going to use New Japan as a great example, he worked with a partial tear in his bicep for a long time. Still is, as, as far as I'm aware. I don't think he's gotten it fixed yet. So, uh, <laughs> there's, uh, you know, there's there's precedent for being able to work with it. Apparently, he has a lot of mobility in his arm that you wouldn't have with a full tear, so that's why they're going with a partial tear. I, At this point, it seems to me pretty obvious that he's going back to WWE. It's just a matter of when. It's It's not if anymore. I agree with that. I think he's he's being smart, mm-hmm. right? Like, let's ride the New Japan uh, train, get this match in the U.S., get me some more publicity, more people talking about me, especially if this match is, is pretty good. And then, uh, you know, people are still talking about his appearance at the Royal Rumble and how good he looked and, you know, had one of the highest views on YouTube and all that. You know, WWE loves all that stuff, uh, talking mm-hmm. about that. So, uh, look, he, the dude sells merch. Let's, let's not, let's not forget about that. They, they still cannot, every, anybody that comes in with a mask immediately, it's, oh, it's Ray Mister. We, oh, Ray Mister is the only guy that can wear a mask here in WWE. Nobody else gets taken 
very seriously uh, with one, honestly. And he's he's the one that made that work. Uh, people still wear his mask to the WWE shows. I think just th- if he can get that part-time deal that he wants, and honestly, he's he's earned it through everything he's done for them and for WCW, all the other companies he worked for, um, you know, they should give it to him and, and use him sparingly. Use him as a special attraction. You can have him wrestle matches here and there, and people can be excited to see him. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I mean, deserve is is rough to say in an industry where it's all fixed, right? But I mean, he has worked very hard, and you can clearly see he's in great shape and all this other stuff. So I, I would definitely say he's worth a special attraction deal or something like that for WWE. It's um, I I don't know. I I don't have a ton of interest in 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 seeing him again just because I, I I'm not going to say I'm over him, but you know. What else is there really for him to do? There, there are a lot of people he could wrestle. That is true, but I don't know. I, I will say that WWE just needs to admit to themselves that throwing a mask on a guy and trying to make him the next Rey Mysterio isn't going to happen. I mean, how long does it right. take you to realize that this guy was just something special that you managed to get your hands mm-hmm. on, it was lightning in a bottle? And until you manage to find that again naturally in somebody, you can't force it. Right. Yeah, I mean, he had the perfect storm of things happen for him that are probably not going to happen for anybody else in that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, just also, you have the thing with the person in the mask usually doesn't talk, and in WWE, the way you get over is you have to be able to talk. Right. Uh, so if that never happens for you, it's very hard for uh, you to move up the ladder. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we've seen with guys that have gimmicks that you go, uh, that's not going to work. Yep. <laughs> oh, but they can talk. Oh, it worked now. Yeah. So uh, Elias is number one, and then showing you that even Braun to an extent uh, has Velveteen made that work dream for him. in NXT. Oh, has Velveteen Dream ever made that work? It's great. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, it's it just shows you the power of the promo. It's still there, and yeah. it's still at large uh, for WWE. Some. Uh, New Japan uh, news. We'll be, of course, be talking big time about New Japan in just a little bit here as soon as we get with, done with Quick Hits. But they finally set up a new uh, worldwide DVD deal that will finally allow them to release uh, shows outside of Japan. Uh, obviously, the new stuff. I mean, I don't know too many people that want to uh, still go and buy DVDs of the big Shows, I mean, the you know, PWG still makes a killing on their DVD things because of the way they have that set up. Mm -hmm. But it seems like when you have a streaming service, people just sort of gravitate to that, and you your DVD sales are obviously going to be hurt by that. WWE's gone through that as well. Uh, They quickly find a way to get their DVDs on the network in that beyond the ring section. Yeah. Um, not to mention, you know, the piracy and all that as well that mm-hmm. also affects sales there. Uh, so, uh, you know, but this is good for New Japan, especially if they can get their older stuff, um, stuff that's not on New Japan World and all that on DVD out there for people to see, you know, best of compilations and, and things like that, I think yeah. would be great. Most of their DVD sets that they do make are compilations based around superstars or factions or stuff like that. So, um, like, their first one that they're coming out with internationally is, is like, an introduction to New Japan that goes over a lot of the big matches that have happened uh, basically since they started rising up in popularity in America over the last five years or so. Um, and, and even then, some of those matches are clipped. So it's it's still Japanese release style to me because it's very, very common in, in, in commercial sets from Japan when it comes to wrestling, at least as far as I'm aware. Um, so, you know, not out of the realm of, of surprise or anything like that. And, and I, I will say it's good. It's good for them, right? I mean, more publicity, you can get your name out there. There are like, I mean, there may not be as big a market for it anymore, but people do are still buying DVDs. Um, so it makes sense to me. Yeah, until it's proven that people are not buying them at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, there's a lot of stuff that's not on New Japan World because of different uh, licenses and yeah. uh, rights. Because uh, you know, TV Asai is actually what who owns 
uh, the rights to their video library, mm-hmm. uh, not New Japan themselves. So right. there's a lot that you, they can put on DVD that you're going to have a hard time finding otherwise. Right. So take advantage of that. Uh, especially if they add any kind of English subtitles or I don't know if they would have Kevin Kelly and Don Callis do any kind of what, you know, that would be used to do where they mm-hmm. would redub the, the commentary track. Uh, announce, yeah. The commentary yeah. could, uh, could help with the English, uh, you know, again, helping spread to America and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, we, we've seen the, the com- I think the commentaries helped a lot adding that English portion in because I think a lot of people do count on that, especially if you're new to a promotion of, of them helping you tell the story. Um, and Kevin Kelly and Don Callis are great together too. Even, even if it's, uh, older, um, Kevin Kelly and Steve Carino bits from, from older matches and it's still good. Oh, for sure. I miss Steve Carino with a, <laughs> uh, doing commentary. Silver King! Uh, but. Right in the ding ding. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the, I, oh, I should, uh, mention probably about the same time you're hearing this. Uh, make sure you listen to Running Wild Podcast this week. Uh, on W2 Network, uh, they have an interview with the Young Bucks. So nice. uh, you definitely uh, want to check them out this week. But uh, that being said, I think, bro, you know, even two people that are on our staff right now, uh, they did not watch New Japan previously, but as soon as they find out there's English commentary, they're all about watching it now. Yeah. So um, that's just two people. I can imagine that there are tons of other people that said, oh, there is New J- there's English commentary regularly. I'm on this now. Mm-hmm. So uh, certainly uh, well worth it for them to, to keep uh, doing that. And they've done more and more of it. So it's great for New Japan to keep uh, spreading its wings. Uh, that's, although, you know, there is one company that does not want any of their information spread at all. <clears throat> and that is uh, Lucha Underground, who, of course, you know, they do their tapings uh, long form. Because mm-hmm. they are more of a TV show, a novella, than a, they're like a novella with wrestling. Right. Uh, it's pretty much what New Lucha Underground is. Uh, in fact, they go as extreme as making you sign non disclosure agreements when you go to their tapings. They've done this for all the seasons. Uh, but this season in particular is getting a lot of heat for spoilers coming out because. Ryan Satin, of course, a pro wrestling sheet, and yep. Steve Bryant, of course, Meltzer does this all the time. He, he also he tends to talk about it on his radio show, which is harder for them to uh, really grasp because somebody has to be listening to that certain radio show where he's he's talking about the spoilers or whatever. Uh, but basically, they just posted full spoilers of Loose Underground for season four, and you know. Whoever signed this NDA that gave them out the the information, Lucha Underground's being like, hello, you're basically giving out all of our results for free, and now people don't really have to watch uh, this show, even though you're talking about stuff that's happening a year from now. If you remember all that stuff, then God bless you. You have a mm-hmm. great memory. But, you know... Do you think that they're really going to? I mean, look, if Robert Rodriguez has some big money, if he wanted to, uh, you know, I know that they've cut down on the all the other stuff that they do with that show, but some people involved are also big money people. They definitely have the ability to sue, you know, these guys that they want to. Mm-hmm. But do you think they really would? I don't know. Uh, that's why this is sort of a curious, cause they've never had a big kibosh about it before and now, because there's, there's always been spoilers of their tapings out there and they've never said anything before and now. So what, what's changed? What's, what's the difference? Is it because they're not as sure it's going to be, you know, the knockout success that it has been so far because it is on a smaller scale and it is on a lower budget and all these other things or, or is it because they're, they're dead, you know, they want you to tune in more than ever now because they need your support more than ever now because they do have less money. So I don't know. The, Ryan Satin is the one who sort of made the big kibosh about this. He sent them a, a huge and, and very nasty reply in, in lieu of their uh, cease and desist letter uh, that he put on Twitter. So it's it's out. I think it's still out there for you to go find. Um, but it's it's 
It's really interesting. I I don't know. I would say yes because you know they, you know if, what if they, if they win, I mean then obviously you're sending sort of a bad message to your fans, but um, they might get something out of it that could help them out. I don't know what, but um, I, attacking the fan base like this doesn't really seem like a great idea when you're already sort of. I feel like with how much time has gone by, it's already sort of shrinking, and it's not big to begin with. Yeah, every year we've seen the ratings go down, especially because they've been taking longer and longer breaks. They had the break in the middle of the season, which I think really, really hurt them uh, last season. And then, you know, I felt like ever since, like, season two, I've heard way less people talking about it. Every season that goes by, mm-hmm. uh, they they still have that. I mean, I know you and Gary love it uh, with good reason. There's uh, great things to love about the show, uh, but and they have their crazy fans. They have their ridiculously hardcore fans still, uh, but it seems like those ridiculously hardcore fans are getting way way less. There's a lot less casual talk about it mm-hmm. on wrestling. And let's be honest, that's where this is Lucha Underground has any kind of push right is wrestling twitter is anything like it even i think worse than impact they need that fandom that hardcore fandom to talk about them because they are the ones that let you know hey this is on netflix too you can check it out Mm -hmm. hey there's this guy that was in wwe there's this guy that you could watch look at look at the way that they do these stories there's people hanging out in bathrooms doing promos and and like electricity flying everywhere and like dudes eating people and uh, you know and just there's stuff happening i mean they have freaking one hour matches and uh on here sometimes and uh you know crazy characters like there's so much like cool stuff that you don't see in any other wrestling promotion Mm -hmm. you know um so like there's reasons to watch this, but when you do things like this, it's, it's hurtful. Uh, you know, let's be honest though. I mean, Ryan Satin did work for TMZ before, so he's very well versed in how you yeah. deal with all this. I mm-hmm. mean, look, they have to deal straight up with celebrities that have a ton of money and can certainly uh, try to scare you in uh, stopping doing a lot of different stuff. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I'm sure that he knows what he's doing. Uh, I think he said, his, if I'm not mistaken, his girlfriend's like a still works at TMZ, something like that. Uh, so, you know, I don't think that you have to worry about what he says aggravating them into him because I would think that you'll probably just get hit with a fine or something like that or some. I don't know really what you would. Okay, what they win some kind of money and damages? Mm-hmm. Great. Okay, you have more money to put into Lucha Underground, but like you said, the long term effect does this hurt hurt you more? Uh, I think it's sort of like almost like the backlash to the music industry when they went after all the people, and they still do. Yeah, uh, after all the people that you know used the Peter Peer networks and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I feel like it could be something like that, you know? Yeah, I, I agree with that entirely. I, I mean, the only thing I could think they could do if they don't want to take legal recourse is just ban them from future tapings, which, which I mean, big whoop, right? But um, you are losing There's coverage. always going to be somebody that's that's going to leak to the dirt sheets. I mean, no, I agree. I mean, that's the only rec- – if you're not going to sue them, that's, I think, your only other recourse is just ban them from shows. Yeah, and you know, I think before the only people that really posted like the whole spoilers was Melter, and because you have to pay for him, mm-hmm. they really can't do a whole lot on that front. But when a free website does it, it's a lot more damaging because then almost anyone can just go on Pro Wrestling Sheet or wherever and look at the spoilers, you know, right. and then they can copy them down and they don't have to remember them all. They can just copy them down and go, Oh, it's starting. Oh, okay. This is what happens. Do I really want to watch it? You know, mm-hmm. eh, maybe, maybe not, you know, right. and let's not forget to, they're on a station that's, it is on sling TV, but uh, it's not on a lot, not in a lot of homes. If you have a cable satellite, it's usually on some kind of premium tier. 
uh, or perhaps on your Latin American tier, uh, which, you know, if you don't have a reason to have your Latin American tier, then you're not going to get that. Uh, so like that, that hurts them too. Uh, they have, they've made some strides in that area, but I feel like because Lucha Underground is really like their only show <laughs> that's new. Uh, I think they did try to bring back like Dust Till Dawn one, one more time or something, but they don't have a lot of original stuff. Uh, I mean, most of their stuff is like old movies. Um, right. So there's not really a whole lot of incentive for anybody to go, okay, let's put this on a lower tier. Let's uh, make a deal to have them on our stations or, or whatever. They are on what they are on, and that's already an uphill battle in itself. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you entirely. They they have a long road ahead of them to try to get back, I think, to where they were. And I don't know if they can uh, without some serious buzz. So, uh, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, really, I, th- I think so long as they stay on Netflix – and uh, they keep having the iTunes deals and stuff like that for their season passes for TV, um, and people keep trying to support them. They'll they'll hang around. I don't know if they'll ever get the big money budget again, but they'll be around for a while if they can keep doing that. Is season three going to be on Netflix? Have they said? I haven't heard anything about that, but I certainly hope so. Generally, Netflix doesn't put their season out until it's really close to when the season, the current season is about to air because they want you to binge right. on purpose. So we'll probably know mm-hmm. uh, whenever they announce season four air date, if it doesn't show up, you know, like a month before or something, maybe start getting worried, but we'll see. Uh, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause you know, you find out a month ahead of time, what's showing up on Netflix. So it won't take very long to figure that out. Uh, speaking of Lucha Underground's uh, parent company, Triple uh, one specifically Dor- Dorian Roldan has expressed interest in buying impact wrestling. Of course, if Anthem doesn't want to sell, it doesn't really matter, but I, what are you going to, if you're Dorian Roldan, like, what are you doing? That's, that's my question. <laughs> like, like, what? what's the point? What do you gain from buying Impact Wrestling other than maybe their TV contracts? Um, that would be the only thing I could think of, in which case if you're trying to make a move worldwide like everybody else, then, I mean, AAA out of Mexico certainly does stand the best chance of trying to get some crossover, but I just, I, I don't know. Uh, this is just such a, a weird move, unless, you know, you're thinking, well, Lucha already co-promotes with them, or co-promotes, or is going to co-promote, plus they have a lot of talent sharing, why not just buy them out and shove them all over on it, uh, Lucha and maybe use their TV deals towards that direction. Yeah. I mean, that could help. Certainly. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure that negatively affects El Rey, which you have to remember that Robert Rodriguez is spending money on Lucha. this show as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he owns El Rey. So I don't know that he's going to want, that to move to a different network. Uh, I don't know that pop, pop TV is in more homes, but I don't know that that's a whole lot of a going somewhere. Right. Uh, but the, I don't know. I, other than saying you're just going to get some of the talent that's on impact wrestling which at this point, you know, it's not a whole lot, mm-hmm. uh, but I just, I just don't know. I mean, unless you're going to, you think you can use that to get on a bigger network, then okay. But I don't know. I guess you got to start somewhere, but it's weird because sometimes you hear Anthem is going through the same problems that Dixie was going through. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're going, okay, well, is this really that much better than what they were going through before? how long before you start hearing about them selling. So I wonder how long Roldan will hold his interest if Anthem just flat out says no. Right. I mean, it's it's basically just talk at this point, but it's more of a, like, what, what are you doing, man? Like, what, <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> it's not like AAA is just doing great stuff 
over there. I'm like, let's focus on triple A. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's gonna do it for quick hits. Yeah, that's it. So uh I guess guess we're gonna talk New Japan next. We're gonna talk uh night one of the New Japan Cup and some anniversary show right after this. King of Spot New Japan Pro Wrestling All right, so this is uh, New Japan's 46th anniversary show is what we're going to talk about first. Uh, took play, oh god, was Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, one of those days in there somewhere. The 6th, which was on, yeah, Tuesday morning. Tuesday, okay. Um, lots, of, lots of undercard tags here going on that uh, aren't super significant. Uh, the IWGP tag team titles change hands here as uh, Kanemaru and Despi end up taking them off of Rapogni 3K and the LIJ contingent of Ta- uh, uh, Hiromu Takahashi and Bushi, um, which, uh, which I thought this was good. Um, I think it was a little obvious maybe the title change is coming because it seems to be the story now that Sho and Yo can win them, they cannot hold them. Yeah, that's an interesting story in of itself. Um you know, you know, they're still young. Uh, the veterans are coming in and doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And hey, let's see where they go with this. I'm sure it just is involving another title change because that's what happens to these titles. But yeah, it was a good match. Um, wasn't anything like you know, I'm saying go out of your way to see, but it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, you also have Sonata defeating Yoshihashi up next here too, which which I really enjoyed. Sonata is sort of starting to come out of his shell some, which is great to see. And uh, old uh, old Yoshihashi here was looking pretty good as well. Yeah, uh, you know these two had a rivalry uh, mm-hmm. big time for a while, so uh, nice to see this uh, get some play here. Uh, Yoshihashi did a great job in playing to the butterfly lock again. Uh, they kind of had me there for a little bit and thinking that maybe uh, he was going to get him because he held it for a while. And then uh, Sonata and Yoshiashi had a great sort of closing stretch. Uh, he uh, was able to counter again the skull in with the backbreaker. And uh, then Sonata finally uh, got him with the moonsault. Mm-hmm. But some uh, a really good match that was the first one. I think on the show that you uh, really should go check out if, especially if you like both guys. Right. Uh, and a, a lot of people have gotten a lot out of facing Okada. I don't think anybody's really gotten more post, uh, you know, post fighting him than Sonata has. Cause it just feels like the crowd has a renewed interest in him now, which is, which is great. You know, this guy seems like he's going to be uh, a player uh, around that, main event upper mid card scene for him for a while if this works out. So that's good. Speaking of working out, who knew that Taichi could have a good match with somebody? And of course it helps when you're in there with Tetsuya Naito and they play to your strengths with Taka attacking and then you get to do a power bomb on the stage and I uh, get to make fun of uh Naito's little uh you know, I don't care bit thing. And uh, you even got fans chanting for Taichi. What world are we living in here? I... It's it's almost a gimmick overhaul for him because now he's not really cowardly or being the guy that's hiding behind the attacks. Now he's just a jerk. It just seems like Suzuki-Goon has finally rubbed off. That attitude has finally turned Taichi into somebody who is watchable. What what happened, Sean? You put on like twenty pounds, and suddenly I want to watch what you're doing. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> apparently, when you hit the heavyweight, you have to start taking things seriously. You cannot be a joke uh, character, uh, and that's what happens here. You know, Taka does get involved. And you get a low blows, and mm-hmm. uh, Taishi tries to hit Naito with the mic, and uh, that doesn't work. But uh, uh, I love the fact that Naito got to hit him back with the low blow mm-hmm. uh, as well, and then hits him with the mic stand too. Just a great work in telling that story, and like, oh, you're going to introduce all these things into the match. Well, uh, jokes on you, dude. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, it looks like Taichi can actually compete, which uh, I will say is more than some other heavyweight moves in the past year have gotten. So that's that's a nice touch on Ghetto's part here, too. Well, you need that when you're facing one uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi in the New Japan Cup. If he doesn't look like a a threat, mm-hmm. then, uh, you know, it. you're not going to care too much about the match. And I think now it makes you care more about it, especially the crowd chanted for Taichi. You know, maybe, maybe uh, Taichi will get some uh, cheers against Tanahashi too because you know that surprise is coming. But I don't know if I believe he's going to get cheered against Tanahashi, but uh, it certainly does make it feel like Tanahashi living up to going out in the first round of the Cup is still going to be a tradition that will live on this year. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gotta love uh, some traditions uh, here. And... Man, uh, speaking of surprising, once again, of course it's Suzuki. So, you know, maybe not so surprising because this dude has been having some uh, really great matches since he returned. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this is Togi Makabe. I mean, you don't have – not everybody has great matches with Togi Makabe. And even then, because he's in his older age or whatever, you have those, like, good, really good matches maybe. But, man, this this was a, a great one, of course. And they have a series as well. And it's just uh, Suzuki played to his strengths here. Makabe uh, got in some stuff. Suzuki just eventually just slaps the crap out of Makabe, then hits that sleeper, hits the power driver, and uh, retains his title. But uh, yeah, I I took a lot away of saying, man, Suzuki is just really just really in it uh, over the the time since he's came back. Since the calendar has turned to 2018, the most wrestling gifts I've seen this year have been of uh, Mr. Mr. Suzuki here with those sick-ass drop kicks he's doing on the button to somebody's face and just absolutely clobbering them with his feet. It's, it is incredible what this guy is still able to do. Not, and he's telling great stories, which is the best part in these matches – uh, but to me, I think the more surprising part here was Makabe, who proved he can still bring it when it matters most. And uh, certainly here in the co-main event with the title on the line uh, and, and playing to his strengths, because this does that, which this is two guys knocking the snot out of each other for 20 minutes, which is great. Um, and that's really where Makabe, it, you know, sort of excels too. But um, Suzuki sort of one op- one-upping him with his sort of sadistic tendencies and all that really... Um, really lets him take this home. But I thought Maka, this is one of the best performances that we've seen out of Makabe since his, uh, the never open way title series that was going on in, uh, 2014, 2015 now. So that's, that's great. Yeah, certainly. Uh, of course that was involving another man that we'll talk about in the, uh, next show. Of course, uh, he never, uh, does anything wrong. So, it's it's fine, but you know, it, it, Makabe, that dude at uh, you know, look, we talk about Suzuki's age. Makabe's mm-hmm. not that far behind, and yeah. he he's still going out there and uh, mm-hmm. doing this thing. And again, Suzuki just uh, killing the old guys, apparently. apparently. Killing uh, young also lines killing too. the young guys. Yeah, yeah. He celebrates the win by murdering Oka, that poor guy. God, poor Oka. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just standing here doing my job. No, you will get the shit kicked out of you, son. Now that's, you die. Uh, <laughs> if you're at the next show, that's a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get, of course, the uh, main event, which was uh, Kazuchika Okada, of course, the IWGP champion against the IWGP junior heavyweight champion, and Will Ospreay. Uh, this was... It was really good still. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Okada had to do a lot to take Osprey out, but this was a lot of Okada dominating as well. So This is sort of, I think, the exact opposite of what I was expecting. It was still good, like you said, don't get me wrong, but it would have been nice to see Osprey compete a little more than what we got. And I understand when you have somebody who is clearly your top guy versus 
your current junior heavyweight champion, like there's going to be a difference. And I, and I understand that, especially in the realm of logic, Okada should win, right? He, he's got a lot of weight and he's got a lot of other things working for him. On the other hand, it's wrestling. And I feel like Osprey maybe needs a little bit more of a chance here to, to sort of look like he maybe could make the jump. Um, and, and I understand maybe you don't want to do that when he's currently holding the title, but I don't know. It feels like you, it, it was a little bit of a disservice to, to will, um, not, not that it actually hurt him all that much, but it still, it feels that way. You know, like I, I walked away like, man, Osprey's not really, you know, he's never going to be on that level and it you know, anytime soon, at least. Yeah. I mean, Okada is the man. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's, there's a certain thing to say, like you said, that you got to make him look good. Uh, there's still that level where the junior heavyweight is, and you know, he's the heavyweight, you're a different class, mm-hmm. you're not supposed to be at my level, and I'm showing you that, I guess, uh, in the end. Uh, you know, Okada comes out afterwards and says he still loves him like a brother. Of course, you got this whole thing with, you know, uh, Jay White is trying to instigate with the factions and, Mm -hmm. and all that. So I don't know if that's just Okada trying to cover himself and, and reassure Osprey or, or whatnot, but yeah, it just, you were kind of hoping for something like really great and something that makes Osprey look awesome. And he still got to have those moments in here, but it was, I felt like much more about Okada, not so much about Osprey. Right. And I think that's the important part here is the narrative um, of the interfaction stuff that's going. Because like you said, not only is the Bullet Club sort of the epicenter of the problems that a faction can have, but you have Jay White sort of pushing a lot of different buttons, especially within chaos of, guys, we, we could be fighting each other and having these these different ma- not only these different matches, but the different opportunities that wouldn't be open to us otherwise. And let's... Let's push that way. And, and I really like that from that extent of Okada is the guy who brought Osprey into chaos. Osprey used to wear trunks that said the junior heavyweight rainmaker for God's sakes. Like this guy is basically Okada's brother. And it felt, it felt sort of genuine, right? But Okada is mm-hmm. also on this sort of bend right now where he's this very cocky guy who feels like he can't lose and, and he's not wrong so far. Right. I mean, so <laughs> right. I, I mean, until somebody beats him, yeah, you know, you're, you're like uh, the old Ric Flair saying, "To be the man, you got to beat the man." That's it. And uh, Okada is the man, and mm-hmm. he has every reason to feel that way because nobody beats him. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but yeah, I, 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 I like that they continue with this story. Uh, we'll keep seeing where this goes, and that leads into, of course, the New Japan Cup, which usually results in whoever wins usually goes after Okada, but you can go after the Never title or the IC title uh, as well. Uh, So that's up for grabs here for everybody that's in this uh, New Japan Cup. It's going a little bit longer this year. I would assume you could toss the U.S. title into that uh, picture now, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, U.S. title could also uh, be in there. So uh, Jay White, watch out now. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, you keep instigating all this stuff, you might be you uh, losing your title. And one of those people that was in that U.S. title tournament, Juice Robinson, he is wrestling one Yujiro Takahashi. And usually with Yujiro, you're sitting there going, oh, God, when can this match end? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this dude is not giving a flying crap. He's more caring about the girl that comes to the ring with him, which, you know, she was pretty hot. No bunny this time, different... Uh, Different look for her. And you know what? Different look for Yujiro because he was into it in this match. Of course, it helps when you got Mr. Energy, uh, Juice Robinson in there. But, man, he was he was uh, going for it. Uh, the big fisherman buster off the top rope. Uh, just uh, he had his moments where you thought, geez, maybe he is going to win this thing. He's really motivated to get his first New Japan Cup win. But the Pulp Friction actually does him in. Mm-hmm. And you have a pretty damn good match with these two. I enjoyed this a whole bunch. Uh, and, and I think the, the best thing about this is, one, not only Jiro's performance, but Juice's continuing amazing work as a babyface of 
somebody who's so easy to get behind and rally and and especially when he's getting the crack kicked out of him like he's such a sympathetic guy when he's taking bumps it's it's unbelievable and um whenever he finally comes back and gets the big win the crowd erupts and and everybody's pumped and you know Yujiro did his job too because I I mean you, this character wise and, and just ring work wise and psychology and all that this is the best he's been maybe ever I I I, don't know. I can't think of the last time he had a match of this quality. So, uh, hats off to Ujiro for finally showing that he does give a shit at least once in a blue moon. Yeah, it certainly helps uh, when you got that motivation clock turned on, and this played very well to well, you know what Ujiro does. Uh-huh. Uh, of course, being that uh, dick heel, and then just letting Juice get that comeback, like you said, and. And go on and win. And so he progresses. And he's not the only uh, guy, Jen, that will progress, sadly. Uh, n- not that I'm complaining about the match we uh, got to watch out of it. But not what I was expecting. Because, of course, you and I are both huge Ishii fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, the man just will not stop having great matches every time that he is in a ring with someone. And this one is no different. Of course, these guys have wrestled before and had great matches before, so it's not anything out of the ordinary. But uh, back and forth, two big guys going at it. The Hoss battle is happening. Just how much can we beat the crap out of each other? And then you have the closing stretch, which includes... Elgin doing a freaking crucifix bomb on the top rope with Ishii landing on his neck. And, oh, my God, you're going, what the hell is happening here? But, you know, Ishii just comes back with that Rana because he's Ishii and he don't give a shit. And, you know, that dude is big. But don't don't let him tell you he's not lying on his feet because he sure is. And... Uh, you get that nasty freaking half Nelson to you from Elgin. Uh, then, of course, he does the burning hammer, and it just he wins. Mm-hmm. You don't kick out of the burning hammer. And it's a surprise. Just a surprise. Uh, that you could hear the hush over the arena as Ishii lost. Um, you know, it's I, I love this match. This match was great. Just still sad about Ishii not going through. Uh, day one of the tournament, Sean. My pick to win it all is already out. Ain't that just New know? Japan for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, this, this is really something. Sp- uh, you know, we give a lot of credit to Okada for the insane run of great matches he's been on. What about Tomohiro Ishii? Big time singles matches for the last four years? Five mm-hmm. years? Yeah. Dude crushes it straight out the ballpark. Every time, four stars or north, easy. Easy. Even if you don't like the guy, you got to give him some credit. This guy... I, I don't know I mean, how you can't like the guy after you watch his matches either. He is so easy to like. I'm struggling it's- to find words, too. It's really hard. Like, I mean, dumped on his head. Sit out, powerbomb, top rope, almost dies, gets up. Says, fuck that, I'm still good. And then it takes a burning hammer to keep him down, which is still, to me, the most painful-looking move in pro wrestling today. Absolutely murderous. Mm -hmm. And he he took that buckle bomb, too. He just kept going. Yeah, bounced right out. Toughest man walking the planet is Tomohiro Ishii. I don't care what anybody else says. I I question Elgin going over, uh, but New Japan does not seem to have any hang-ups about what's going on over here stateside with him. So... He's still a Gajin that can push. I think they're behind that idea still. As much as I really wanted Ishii to go deep in this tournament and keep trying to push that interfaction rivalry narrative, I get it, right? Elgin's sort of been on the back burner for a while. This is a way to sort of bring him back to the forefront if they so choose. I don't have the bracket in front of me. Is Juice and... Are they next to each other in that bracket? Or are they on the other side? Or... I think they are on the same side of the bracket, but I don't think they are the ones who... Oh, no, I was wrong. They'll they'll meet each other next round. Okay. So you get that rematch again, Mm -hmm. which it it usually goes well uh, with those two. 
Um, yeah. Sometimes in the States, people kind of, it's weird. In the States, people kind of tend to not care too much about it. Um, but, and this was pre Elgin fiasco, mm-hmm. uh, but seems to do much better in Japan with uh, two guys that the crowd likes. So uh, let's hope that uh, they get to have another uh, great match and you continue a, a really good run for them here. So, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it, the whole show looks to be pretty fun. I only watched, I only had time to watch the new Japan cup matches, but everything else on here looks pretty standard for what they're building towards still too. So, yeah, they do have, it's either on now or going to be on in a couple of hours, uh, the next set of matches. Mm-hmm. And then uh, of course, again, they have shows on Sunday as well. And Monday, uh, and then we'll, of course, have our show on Monday, and we'll talk about all the matches from Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then they'll take a break, and they'll resume Thursday, Friday. So uh, lots of New Japan Cup for you to watch. Uh, hopefully some really good matches for you to partake in as well. And, yeah, that's it for uh, New Japan, but some two pretty good shows. Yeah, definitely check out the New Japan Cup matches. I think the last four over on the anniversary show are also worth your time. But if you do enjoy the undercard, um, definitely check those out too, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, with all that sort of in the books, uh, with Gary not here, that means I will run down Ring of Honor and Impact solo. So hopefully uh, it won't take up too much of your time, but I will try to give it as much uh, exposition as I can. So uh <laughs> We'll uh we'll do Ring of Honor first here, so let's go ahead and cut to that. So uh, naturally, this is their TV taping. The 16th anniversary pay per view was obviously today. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the chance that Gary's gonna want to talk about that when he comes back. So we will save that discussion for another time. Um, I have, however, read a couple of reviews of the show. They have all been pretty good, especially that main event, so uh, do go check it out if you're on the fence. However, this episode of Ring of Honor TV opens with the Briscoes taking on the best friends in tag team action. Briscoes end up winning here in 7 minutes, 20 seconds. Uh, you also have Adam Page beating Christopher Daniels in 7 minutes, and Dalton Castle and Jay Lethal defeating Marty Scroll and Punishment Martinez. Um... The booking on this show, first of all, is really smartly worked towards pushing pay-per-view and, and all the narratives they have going, right? So the Briscoes getting a win over a team, uh, the last team to actually challenge for the tag team titles on, on a big show in the Best Friends. I thought it was a smart move. Uh, Paige getting one up on Daniels ahead of the pay-per-view and then working in the Shane Taylor storyline, right, of, of him being the hired gun and being paid off by SoCal Uncensored to have him come in and attack him post-match. Also very smart. Uh, there as well because we know that SoCal Uncensored is trying to force Ring of Honor's hands into re-signing them because their contracts expire this year and uh, we know from Joe Coff that they are not interested in re-signing this trio of douchebags. So, <laughs> um, And then of course the main event, right? You've had Marty Scroll and Punishment Martinez angling and getting title shots and trying to line up and of course Jay Lethal's the next guy up uh, for the 16th anniversary show against Dalton Castle and these two guys get a strong win over those contenders um, with Lethal once again beating Marty with a lethal injection. And uh, Marty Scroll and Punishment Martinez also uh, got their match added to the actual card of the 16th anniversary show. So lots of good stuff happening here. Um, nothing super out of this world match wise that you really should watch, but both the opener and the main event are, are good. So if you're looking for some wrestling to watch, that is on here. Uh, once again, no Women of Honor tournament on here as well because they keep showing those matches on YouTube. And the uh, matches that were scheduled for the 16th anniversary show were on the pre-show. So, um, yeah, we're supposed to get more of those Women of Honor tournament matches on TV next week. So if you're at all interested in what's going on there, um, tune in next week for sure. But it's, it's going to be nice to see them get back on TV again with somebody who, um, I mean, I'm going to assume it's going to be the next round match for... Um, Mandy Leone, but uh, we can always hope it's somebody else getting some TV time to go around. Um, but that's that's basically Ring of Honor in the books. Like I said, I, I didn't want to take too long, but uh, I'm sure me and Gary will run down 16th anniversary 
sometime next week, whether it's on Monday or Thursday, being that we are both extremely busy. Um, so let's move on to Impact Wrestling and their Crossroads episode this week. And this is almost a pay-per-view-esque show in how they present it, because there's very, very little filler. It's very match-to-match. Here's all the big stuff. Boom, 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 boom. And they they come at you with a lot of well-timed matches, a lot of well-paced matches. Um, so taking a look at the results here, you have the tag team titles up for grabs first as LAX successfully defends against the Colts of Lee uh, in a little north or a little bit around 13 minutes. Um, then you have the title for title match between Matt Seidel, who's your grand champion against Ishimori, uh, who is your X division champion. And of course, Matt Seidel comes out on top little North of 17 minutes and Allie finally succeeds in winning the knockouts title. She beats Laurel Van Ness, um, and, and, uh, a little over nine minutes. I'm sorry. I blanked there for a second. Uh, Lashley and cage also beat OVE in about 10 and a half minutes. And there's a little bit of interesting bits spinning out of that that we'll talk about after I get done with this last little bit here. And that's, of course, Austin Aries successfully defending his world title against Johnny Impact. And what this was everything I was hoping it would be. This is such a great match. Great, you know, great pace, well back and forth. Everybody looking good. Uh, Aries manages to basically squeak by um, after capitalizing on Impact, missing the Starship Pain and um, putting him away with the big drop kick in the brain buster. And of course you have Alberto El Patron throwing his hat in the ring basically afterwards to challenge as he comes out and applauds Austin Aries for his effort. And, um, once again, it goes near 20 minutes it is absolutely worth their time. It's a great match. Um, cage and Lashley, uh, and what was originally going to be a handicap match since Callahan broke Eddie Edwards face with that baseball bat. Um, Lashley ends up pairing up with cage and they go over OVE Pretty quick here with Cage looking dominant once again. Another Steiner screwdriver uh, on Jake to get the victory. Um, Lashley takes out Sammy after that too. And Cage sort of refuses a handshake from Lashley at the end. And th- this is probably going to build up to Lashley's final bow being against Cage uh, to make him the new monster on the block. And that's um, I really kind of want to applaud that. I think that's a really smart move doing it this way. So hats off to Impact there. Allie winning is a great feel-good moment. It maybe came a lot later than it should have, but um, the match is good. Allie worked a great match. She's such a fun baby face to get behind, and, and Laurel did her part as well too. So hats off to that as well. They also have Gail Kim, who has sort of become a mentor for Allie, come out and celebrate with her and, and all that stuff. It's very cool. Uh, Ishimori, Matt Seidel, also greatly worth your time. Well paced, exactly what you wanted it to be. I think too, lots of, lots of flying, lots of great groundwork too, because they're both great at that. And, um, Seidel manages to come out with two belts, which is, which is pretty cool. So, um, even though I'm still not a huge fan of the whole gimmick he's got going, um, you can't, I mean, this is the part of that Seidel's great at, and you can't really get mad at that. I think I, you could take or leave the tag team title match to me. It's a little short for my taste. I like LAX. I, uh, Cult of Lee, I'm still sort of struggling to catch on with just because they don't seem like... I, one, I'm not interested in Caleb Conley. I think I've made that pretty well known. But uh, I don't, Trevor, they just sort of come off as annoying. They're not really threatening. And I think that comes across pretty well here uh, as LAX ends up winning pretty quick after uh, they decide to stop... To, uh, basically time to take care of business. So, uh, it's a great episode of impact though. Uh, if, if you're at all a fan of the promotion or curious about it, I would say this is a pretty great episode to go check out if you want to see what's happening. So, um, do so at your convenience. And that's ROH and impact for you. I'm sorry. Gary's not really here to discuss it with me. And, uh, I've had to watch this pretty quickly over the last couple of days. So, um, absolutely good, good stuff from both shows though. So go check them out. And, uh, I, I know that's basically our show. Um, we're going to wait on superstar of the week too, because Gary watches, uh, some of the other wrestling on here to help fill out the list. And, um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I Sean, you want to plug anything before we get on out of here? 
Yeah, of course. Uh, go visit uh, www.net.com where you can get uh, all of our podcasts on website form. Of course, you can always listen to on your favorite podcast device, uh, you know, whichever thing you like to use, Our Heart Radio, uh, Podcast Addict, iTunes, Stitcher, whatever. All those things, we're on there. If we're not on whatever we like to use, you know, you can always hit us up on Twitter at WTimSean, at HildaChimp7, uh, or just at W2Network. That's the one for the site and for the network. You can just hit us up there and say, hey, I have this podcast thing that I like to use. Y'all are on there. All right. I'll find a way to get us on there. It shouldn't take too long. And uh, again, go listen to Running Wild Podcast. their episode uh, with the uh, interview uh, with the Young Bucks, and they also... Uh, review uh, the uh, Our Witch Manhattan show as well. Uh, Rich, of course, is uh, he's been big into covering Lucha recently, but he's he does uh, still does the big ROH reviews of PW Ponderings and all that. So mm-hmm. uh, they know their stuff over there. And make sure you check us out on Sunday for the Fastlane review and probably a return to the video version. So uh, some of you uh, really like that. And, uh, you know, again, if you want that more on the regular than just pair views, you got to let us know. But we probably need to get adjusted to the work schedules and all that stuff for that to happen first. So I would say that probably wait till after Mania or something like that uh, for for that maybe to happen on one of the regular shows Maybe one video and one not or something like that. But again, you got to let us know. If we don't hear anything, uh, we're just going to keep it to a special uh, pay review only kind of thing. Uh, so because uh, that does take time to uh, get ready and figuring out what you're going to put on those the the screen and all that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, so, but yeah, uh, thank you as always for listening to us. Uh, Gary will be back on the pay review review. And, of course, on the Monday episode where we already told you we're going to be talking more than the Band Cup. And, of course, the news uh, for that show. And, thankfully, uh, this Thursday we won't have some kind of big pay-per-view <laughs> to cover. Uh, so make sure you uh, check that out as well. Check out all the other podcasts on the network. Uh, and uh, we'll see you later, everybody. Have a good one, guys. <laughs> Previous podcast is a W2Mnet.com original podcast. For more great content like this, go to W2Mnet.com for the worlds of wrestling, video games, entertainment, and sports. <laughs>